All right, let's go down and check out my little crop of lava lilies. That uh, oh yeah, it looks like they're starting to come up pretty good. Starting to grow. Beautiful. G'day guys, Bloody Drongo here with you, aka Emu, and welcome to five tips every Wormian should know. Now. In that intro there, I may have played a little bit of a trick on you. If you believed that there was such a thing as fire lilies, you would probably also believe that if you say watermelon very slowly backwards, it sounds like gullible. <laughs> Most of these tips and tricks, I will just come out and say it, a lot of you will know, but they're like... I've tried to pick up on tips and tricks that may not immediately be obvious, but when you know them, they are a massive, massive help. So, yeah. I'll show you now, well, I'll start off with number one of my tips and tricks you may not know by explaining my intro. And uh, we're going to get into it. Tip number one, fire pillar. Now... Back, I discovered this back when I was a GM, and back then, I don't know if it's still the case now, but back then, you were able to do a lot of client-side commands to change weather, to uh, change lighting, to do all kinds of different things, but only client-side. I mean, there were other console commands to do global stuff, but mainly it was a lot of client-side commands for the GM, uh, just the regular GM account. And one of these commands was Fire Pillar. And way, way, way back when Rolf first introduced Fire Pillar and stuff, there were a huge bunch of problems to do with the actual particle effects and how they all sort of like worked in Worm. And there was a huge amount of drama with like lag and crashing and all kinds of stuff when Fire Pillar was used. So I'm pretty sure this is a residual leftover part of uh, that whole era of uh, testing and that kind of thing, but as you can see, as it, I come out onto the farm now, there's no lava tiles, but there was before. You saw it, I saw it. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you. If you type, open up your console and you type in fire pillar into your console, whoa, there's a fire effect, just like the actual fire pillar spell. And there's also a lava tile effect now on the ground. And again. And again. And again. And you can see these tiles are stay the style file uh, sorry. You can see the tile type st stays exactly the same. This is only a purely client side aesthetic change. So nothing uh, changes for anybody else, it's only for your client. Now, the very useful thing about this is that this will stay, this lava effect will stay for as long as this client stays in, logged in for. Doesn't matter how far away I, go, away I go from it, as long as I don't re-log, it will stay. Which means that it has the practical application of actually being used in sort of a Hansel and Gretel sort of style. You can run like 20 tiles, like if you're a directionally uh, challenged person like myself, you can run along 20 tiles, open up your console, hit fire pillar, put down a fire pillar, and that lava tile will stay there for as long as you're logged in. And so you can sort of, you can go somewhere, leave a little trail of lava pillar tiles, and then be able to follow them back home. So it's quite useful in that kind of sense. Obviously, it has the ability to be used in just a purely aesthetic sense, so if you want to take some cool screenshots, you can do that. And also, in a PvP sense, you can also use this to mark out catapulting ranges, uh, mark mine doors, all kinds of different things, so you have the ability to highlight important tiles, which is very, very beneficial. And yeah, that's, that's the first trick. It's worth noting that this doesn't actually work underground in caves, um, and, it, and as far as I know, there are no other variations of this trick, of just cl uh, console commands for regular game accounts. Um, I, th yeah, it's not like there's like a, another version of Ice Pillar for this or anything like that, so yeah, 
that's, that's, that's tip number one. Okay, so we've got tip number two, which is satchels. Now, normally if I was to plant some crops, I would have to open up my little baggie here of oats, and I would have to left click, double left click select, and then right click on the ground and sow. And then after the first one sown, I would have to move to the next tile, double left click again and right click so again. That seems like a hell of a lot of effort, doesn't it? What would be much easier is if I drag my satchel onto my tool belt, like you can see I have here, and then select my tool belt. Uh, select the satchel on my tool, be <clears throat> tool belt, rather, and then just right click so. And this has been around now for quite some time. It's certainly nothing new, but it is just it's just one of those things that's so simple, but it improves the quality of life in this game by such a huge margin. It's just such a time saver. You even get like a little number in the in the slot on the tool belt of how many items you have left in it. So it's 55 right now. It's 55 oats in there, and I, it's just so damn easy. Oh. Whoever thought of this and implemented it is just a genius. We need more just really simple, elegant solutions to everyday, you know, grindy stuff, which is, doesn't have to be as grindy as it is. Like, this is just so simple and elegant, and it just saves so much time. It's beautiful. And as well as farming, you can use this for taming as well. I'm, I'm probably forgetting other applications for this exact mechanic as well. But look, I can right, uh, select it on my tool belt and then just right click tame. And just as long as I keep just selecting that, just one click there, then click there. And I do not have to do anything. I don't have to do any inventory management. I have to don't. It's just so easy. So you can you can fit multiple satchels all along your tool belt. If you've got a massive ass farm that you need to get planted, you can go absolutely nuts and just have seeds all across your entire tool belt lower uh, tool belt loadout. And it's just so helpful. So that's tip number two, guys. Let's hit number three. Okay. Now, tip number three, it's going to be a little bit hard to demonstrate, but I'm going to do my best. It's just about how you press your keyboard buttons. Now, that may sound ridiculous, but it's actually incredibly useful when dealing with BSBs and crates and stuff. So your bulk storage options. Now, normally, if I was to, tr say, try and transfer some of this mortar from this BSB here into these large crates here, I'd have to left-click and drag, i will come to this screen here, and I'd have to manually select as many as I can carry. Or, I could go like that, and then just hit Enter. Which, again, it's not too slow, but a much quicker way to do this would be to... I'll move this box over here hold down shift and then hit enter just afterwards and then just hold them both down and as long as you're holding them both down having pressed shift first I can now almost instantaneously just shift uh, left click not shift uh, <laughs> I can <laughs> click drag the items from one BSB into another so I can do like so and no menu pops up there's no delay, and it again, this is one of those things that's really, really simple, but it just saves so much time. It's such an elegant solution to something that is a really tedious little task. Like, if I was having to transfer all this manually, it would just be the worst. And you can see here I'm transferring from a BSB into la uh, large crates in my wagon. It also works between BSBs like so. Oh, look at that. Just moving. Moving thousands. Well, more like just under a hundred. Now that does happen sometimes. I'm lagging out a little bit. It's what I get for being an Australian. But look, look, I'm just, it's just so much quicker to do it this way than it is for to do it manually. It's just, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. And I mean, 
a lot of you guys probably know this these kinds of things, but for those of you that don't, I know you guys are really, really going to appreciate this stuff, which is why I'm making this video. So let's get into number four now. Okay, so here we are, and tip number four is cave entrances. Now, this is a, a trick that has been widely used by a lot of players for a very, very, very long time, but I don't often see it get talked about a lot. It's just, it is really, really, really beneficial to know about this, and that is the ability to w look through cave walls. Now, anybody that has their game turned up um, the cave detail turned up too high, we'll be able to occasionally clip through a cave wall and maybe see passages, but it's not a reliable thing and you aren't able to ever mouse over anything through the wall. However, with entrances there is a way that you can both reliably look through the cave wall and also mouse over things that are underground as well, which is, and above ground actually, if you can still see them, which is extremely, extremely useful, especially if you're connecting tunnels together, if you're trying to scout out certain areas, and or if you just want to see if there's any other caves nearby. So this is a very, very helpful trick. Now all it requires you to do is when you're near your tile border, or around the mouth of the cave, is just hit climb and walk next to the mine entrance and then as you're about well actually anywhere along this tile border or that tile border there just drop into the mine keeping to climb toggled on and you will be able to look through the wall and this trick also allows you to get out of mine entrances very easily because while you have climb on you can actually walk out the sides of a mine as long as you do not toggle it off. So you can see here, in and out, in and I just moved too far away and it's toggled off. But you can get close, uh, as long as you stay close to the tile border with climb on then you can keep going in and out of the mine. So I can could potentially hop in this mine maybe drag a cart or something and then just hop straight back out and the cart would come with me. Now the really beneficial thing about this is that while I'm doing this little clip here I can also look through the ground and I can mouse over this stuff here as you can see I can also mouse over cave walls and see caves that are nearby which is extremely useful. And you can see, yeah, that one's a reinforced, that's a normal cave wall there. So, I mean, this has a lot of practical uses on PvP servers. That one's a lead vein. And just in general, this is a really super useful trick. And like I said, this has been used for a really, really long time. And I mean, unless you have been passed on uh, this information by first hand, then you probably don't know about it. Th this is... <laughs> just it's so so useful because I mean if you're trying to connect up two t uh, cave tunnels there is no way of seeing or detecting where that other cave shaft is in relation to you but using this trick you can often be able to pinpoint exactly where your tunnel is and how to connect it properly so it's really really useful actually what I would love to see in game actually is a like a mole sensors like uh, spell which highlights in maybe red or pink or something di differing brightness for how close and far away you are from other tunnels underground that you can't directly see so you can sort of get a little bit of a feel through walls as to where other passages are that would be an amazing amazing addition I think anyway but yeah that's tip number four let's get into number five Okay, so tip number five is again just a little tiny quality of life tip, but it is so damn useful. Now, back in the day, if you wanted to pave a road, you used to have to carry an inventory full of bricks and manually walk along carrying 120 kilograms of said bricks to pave the ground, but no longer is that the case. You can still be the commander of a wagon or a cart or something like that and still be able to perform actions such as paving, 
without ever having to leave the luxurious seat of your ride. So, I mean, look at that. It's so e easy. And using the shift enter trick that I showed you before, pulling items out of crates is just so easy as well. So, these things tend to work together fairly well in tandem as well. And not only does this apply to stuff like stone bricks and slabs for making roads, it also works for stuff like support beams. Now I didn't actually know this, the support beams at least, until very recently when I did my last Foster's Brewery episode when uh, one of my friends messaged me and started making fun of me for manually putting down the support beams on foot. But you can actually do it as the commander of a large cart. So I can be sat in here, I've just pulled out my support beams, and all the whole time just sitting in my cart, I can just hit reinforce and reinforce. So simple and so easy. And that's tip number five. Okay, so there you go, guys. That is five tips that every Wormian should know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video guys and I hope there was some, at least one or two tips and tricks in there that you didn't actually already know and that you'll be able to put to good use. Now I know I haven't been doing any of my Foster's Brewery uh, series lately and that will probably continue to be the case for the next little while at least. Uh, I'm still over on Chaos uh, looking after my village Kratos and my kingdom in general uh, just trying to get things under control here. and. Well, I mean, a lot of I have had a few messages from people asking what I've been up to and if they can expect any PvP videos. Uh, maybe we'll see. Uh, a lot of the the PvP that I've actually been involved with, I mean, not that there's been a lot of it. Um, I've always been multi-clienting, and I find it extremely difficult to multi-client and record at the same time. Well, not so much me, but my computer <laughs> finds it difficult. Uh, but this is. Actually, I just thought I'd come down here and show you what I, me and my kingdom have been doing, and that is finishing off Hades Wall. And if you watched my Village Showcase video on Kratos, you will probably recognize this and also see that it is actually quite a bit larger than it was, and it also has longhouses all along it now. So it's coming along quite nicely. We're going to be continuing to work on this and making it multi-story and just a a formidable, a formidable wall. So I'm looking forward to that. I might actually do a little tour along it or some at some point, uh, depending on how things go. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Until next time, stop playing with yourself and play with somebody else. Catch you later.